Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the beautiful Mandy. Mandy, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? I am doing very well. It is an honor to have you here, not just because of your horror history, but because of some of the things you're working on now. And before we talk about the reason you're here, I want the people that don't know you, Mandy, to get to know you a little bit. Um, you currently live in L.A. Uh, you moved there from Virginia at age 18 to experience a new life because the country life just wasn't cutting it for you anymore. I understand I'm still in Michigan, so I totally <laughs> get where you're coming from. Um, now, the way you and I connected, uh, you currently own your own business called Monster Under Your Bed Clothing, where you design and sew various clothing pieces, focusing on horror, sexy, and 90s-inspired fashion. And she makes custom, one-of-a-kind pieces. And the best way for you guys to get in contact, to get your own custom, one-of-a-kind pieces, are to click the links down in the description because I have all of her social media links everywhere that you could want to get one of these custom pieces. So what gave you the desire to want to start Monster Under Your Bed Clothing? Ooh, so even since I was really little, my grandma taught me how to sew. We were hand sewing little like pillows. And then my mom also like, it was just, you know, one of those little country things you hang out with your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> so I, used to, I remember getting those little like craft store, le um, what are they, feathers, you know, those little cheapy pink and blue sparkly feathers. And I used to buy like solid color t-shirts and I would just sew them and it would be like the ugliest thing you've ever seen. But I just loved it. I was like, I did that. I made that. So Ever since I was young, I was always into fashion. Um, and then into middle school, high school, I did graphic, uh, you know, the graphic design class. And I sure. remember asked, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I think that's like, I know it's weird. But it was like ninth grade. It was the first time anyone ever asked me that. And I really thought about it. And I was like, I want to be a fashion designer. And I made like this whole little whatever graphic design thing that we were doing our project at the time. And I don't know, ever since that moment, I just took it kind of serious. <laughs> right. Well, and like I said, this is how you and I discovered each other. I came across some of your creations. I was very, very interested in what you were doing. And I reached out because if there's something I love in this world, it's horror. If there's something I love more than that, it's when people are finding their passion and doing their calling in life wrapped around horror. So to be able to watch you do these creations that are inspired by some of the movies that made you, I think is absolutely amazing. So how long have you been in business for now? I should probably really keep track, but like official <laughs> month in your bed, I feel like it's been at least nine, maybe going on 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the good thing about that too is when you get a custom piece uh, from Mandy and Monster Under Your Bed Clothing, this is one of a kind. Nobody else is ever going to duplicate or replicate the thing that you're getting. And she works very hard to make sure that they're all one of a kind pieces. Now, when someone submits a design, what's the best way to go about making sure that they're getting the exact design they want? Do you guys go back and forth or is it kind of like you have your designs, they pick what they want or how do you, how's your process work? Honestly, a bit of both. So you can message me um and say hey i really like this on your page how do i get it and those are probably the easiest ones because it's like something i made a hundred times you know i have my best seller oh no problem i got you but then someone's like hey have you ever made this in pink or can you do it like sometimes i do like the uh slasher ghost face jason whatever they're like have you ever done with um you know a pumpkin face or whatever and i'm like oh i haven't but i can so it's kind of just sure. either you can ask for customs or you can say hey i like this on your page or you can alter something i've already kind of made and have it your style so it just either one <laughs> And I said this a little bit ago, but I mean it. The quickest way to do that is by clicking the links down in the description. So, um, like I said, I stumbled upon your page. I was very impressed uh, with what you do. And to bring you on here to learn how it started for you is such an honor for me. Because I feel like I don't remember my first comedy. I don't remember my first drama. But I remember the first time I got that high of watching a horror movie. So let's make that segue now. So we know what you got going on now and in the future with Monster Under Your Bed Clothing. And I couldn't be any more proud of the hard work that you put into your company. But... I got to know. Well, let's go back to the past, Mandy, and talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And Mandy, the first horror movie that you watched was? Child's Play. <laughs> As if you guys didn't know. <laughs> um, so Love Child's it. Play, I I've talked about this numerous times, and anybody that's a repeat viewer of the podcast knows, is my absolute favorite horror franchise. Um, I think that... It's it's with the exception of Scream, where I don't think Scream's really had any stinkers. I think Child's Play is the most consistent horror franchise out there where I can put on any of the movies and be absolutely contented in what I'm watching. So do you remember about how old you were? The, we're talking about the OG 1988, right? 
We are. So I was born in 92. So technically, you know, I didn't see it at its debut, but it felt <laughs> so fresh or early 90s, right? So yeah. I want to guess I was probably four or five years old. I Up to six, no older than six. So I'm pretty sure I was four or five because I was the youngest, you know, of all my cousins and they were all boys and they were already into all the horror shit, you know? So I remember right. just walking like, huh. And I just, that's the one that sticks out the most. Like I, we watched a lot of horror, Jason, Halloween, the leprechaun, he's another favorite, but that one, I remember that because I'm naturally a redhead. So I got called Chucky a lot. So I, I just, rem it reminds me of my like childhood, my whole youth. <laughs> right. And it's yeah. funny because um, I feel like if we watched child's play, you know, in our, in our teen years or as a young adult for the first time, it probably wouldn't have the same impact, but when you are a child and your life revolves around um, action figures, dolls, stuffed animals, things like that, to watch a movie like this is very impactful because that's our world at that point. You know, that's all we know, <laughs> Nintendo and action figures. So um, we know that you were quite a young lady the first time that you had seen it, but were, were you with your cousins the first time? Or was this like, a, hey, let's get Mandy around and scare the shit out of her? Honestly, I think we were just hanging out. Like, I, I they didn't really pick on me, I would say. It's funny because I was such, like, I don't know if this term is still a thing, but, like, a tomboy. I was just mm -hmm. another of the dudes, you know? I never wore, like, I would wear dresses and stuff for picture day or whatever, but I was such a boy, played in mud, you know, bikes. Yep. Like, it was normal. So they didn't, like, pick on me like a girl, like a girl. <laughs> but I have another right. cousin. She was the girly girl and like she was already painting her nails you know by like four years old five years old she was the one we all got together to scare so i was the cool one. <laughs> yes. right well, um i feel like obviously you know at the time of recording it's 2023 uh chucky season three just ended the tv series the first half of it just ended and so that shows the longevity in what child's play is able to do and i feel like that comes with being so iconic and so memorable and nothing is more iconic than the first movie, in my opinion, when it comes to some of the scares and some of the kills and things like that. But which scene would you say it was, Mandy, that affected you the most from the first Child's Play? So I think I, I do. There's two scenes. And I know that we want the scary scene, right? So I'll start with that. The scariest was just when, like, Andy's mom was like, something's going on with this damn doll. I know he's real. You know, I know he's going to talk. And she picks him up and she's like, I said, talk to me, damn it, or else I'm going to throw you in the fire. <laughs> You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? In that scene, I was like, oh shit. That's probably the best, like, out of the, the spook, you know? Because well, that's our first time as the viewer that we actually see Chucky come to life. Before this, it's all in shadows and first person yeah. things. Like at it. this moment, when you finally see that face change, you stupid bitch, you little slut! Yeah. You're like, whoa, I don't even know what those words mean right now. Yes. You know, so to see that is absolutely terrifying. And it still holds up today. Like, the practical effects of the doll so still amazing. hold up so well today. CG, I can't do that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But then my other, I don't know why this sticks in my head. Do you remember when Andy, like, in the beginning, he wakes up and he, like, makes his mom breakfast and he dumps mm -hmm. the cereal and he burns the toast? For some reason, that sticks in my head. It's not even scary, but, like, that movie alone has so many, like, just good parts. <laughs> Well, I think that the good thing about that and something that we often forget about in movies nowadays is how truly important it is to not only build our character development, but to build our relationship between characters. And this really is a character building moment between Andy and his mom. You have this moment of, you know, he's running through the hall and the milk's getting all over the tray and he's got a literal glob of butter on the most yep. burnt piece of toast and she picks it up and the butter falls off and it shows that like at, at this point i've never seen anything more cute than this fucking kid right now like this is the cutest thing i've ever seen and you know he's making his mom breakfast in bed and then he goes back out and he's watching the good guy on tv yep. like it's it, it that moment you're really like wow this kid is really has this perfect relationship with his mom. You know, because then they cuddle up in the bed and she's holding him and rocking him and <laughs> they really have this perfect mother-son relationship. So I completely remember that scene because I felt the same way as a kid. Like this is, like even as a kid, like you realize the purity yeah. of that moment and how amazing that moment truly is. And um, you know, let's go from something super pure to something not. Um, as horror fans, we love the kills. You know, we go in, we love the kills, we look for the kills, and 
the original Child's Play doesn't have many, but the ones that it have are very, very memorable. So of all the kills in the first Child's Play, which one would you say was the one that stuck with you the most? Oh, man, I think the babysitter, right? It's just like, it just like, oh, that was like, I don't know. That, I don't even know how to explain it. I just, I, that pops in my head immediately. There was other ones too, but I, there should be more important, but just that scene alone and it shows like Andy and his mom and they're just like, it really affected their life because, you know, that's someone that he dealt with and they knew very well. And then also us were just like, damn, that was, she was a nice lady. <laughs> like Chucky. Right. Then, uh, Chucky said, Aunt Maggie's a bitch. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Andrew. Watch your language, young man. You know, so Aunt Maggie, yep, that's it. (laughs) So, like, you get, and and again, like, you get that kill. You get the obvious kill of Charles Lee Ray at the beginning in the store. Um, Eddie Caputo with the house blowing up. Um, And my personal favorite, it's my second favorite in the whole franchise, when you have the voodoo doll with John. You know, you shouldn't tell your customers where you hide these things, John. He starts breaking. Oh, it's so gnarly. I wish we could have gotten more things like that. I didn't say, like, like this is, like, one of my first horror movies, but it's been a few years since I watched it. I should have probably put it on, <laughs> but I'm just remembering all those scenes now. <laughs> and it, it's funny because, like, we watch these movies and they stick with us. And something I've noticed, um, and I've admitted this before, I watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the first time when I was probably, you know, eight or nine years old. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch it again until I was probably 21. Yeah. And I remember putting it on and just being like, oh, man, this is such a visceral movie and it's so bloody and gory. And, like, my brain as a child had connected dots that weren't there. And, like, yeah. I'm watching the movie and I'm like, this movie's a fucking brilliant. There's nothing bloody and gory about this movie at all. It's just a brilliant art. Like, if if that movie was made today, it would have been an A24 film. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an artsy, like, yeah. all about the shots, all about things like that. So um, I absolutely love that about that film. Yeah. So we talked about the kills and Child's Play is a big franchise now, but which film in the Child's Play franchise would you say is your favorite of all of them? Honestly, like I'm going to get so much hate for this, but I was already a pretty good age when The Bride of Chucky came out. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you, I grew up, you know, in the South from Virginia. We were so big on like any kind of like Southern rock, you know, you got your CCR, you got your, you know, I don't know, just all your, even I don't want to say Leonard Skinner, but yeah, I was raised on Leonard Skinner, but then you throw in Rob Zombie, and then I just was raised hearing that, and as soon as they play Living Dead Girl, I was like, what? <laughs> it's sick. That's, that's Ashley's, that, that's my wife's favorite, and um, I'm always the weird one. I, You know, you think you'll get hate for yours. I, I've always said Child's Play 3 is my favorite. I think yeah. that there's something about that movie that's so special, Um, and Bride is one of those movies that uh, it came out at the perfect time when you had, you know, the scream craze growing on and you had like this and then Halloween H2O, you know, Wes Craven's new nightmare had come out a couple years before, um, you know, all these movies were coming out and really taking, you know, their turns dipping into the meta world. And I think that this was a very important movie in the meta movement. Um, you know, you have the one part where he's John Ritter gets the nails in his head. And took- Why does that look so familiar? You know, like that. All these amazing <laughs> moments in this movie. I I think that it's it, quality wise one of the best in the franchise. The kills are phenomenal in Bride of Chucky. Um, Jennifer Tilly steals the show. Yeah. An amazing, amazing addition to the franchise. Um, so I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I think that Bride of Chucky is a fantastic entry in the franchise. I don't think that I don't think I've ever heard anybody really hate on Bride. I if they did, I just kind of maybe tuned them out because I think the movie's yeah. so good. But so um, good horror connoisseurs who say oh that's nothing that's trash but i'm like dude <laughs> yeah, it's, it's genius is what it is um but none of movies are bad i honestly like all of them and i'm gonna be honest that i have not watched the newest show because i know it's still going and i just i have a hard time watching shows so i need to wait but i will see it <laughs> eventually <laughs> um i'm not gonna spoil anything uh season one is phenomenal phenomenal okay. television season two is good Okay. Good. Uh, season three has gone back to phenomenal. The first four episodes to me. Um, to yeah, there has not been even an episode so far where I've been like, "What are we doing, man?" Like, okay. I can find saving grace in every single thing. So, but maybe again, I wear bl- you know rose colored blinders because Child's yeah. Play is my favorite franchise. <laughs> so I'm gonna I make excuses for every bad thing they've done. So, 
Um, you know, we know that, you know, your horror life started with Child's Play. We know your favorite one in that franchise is Bride of Chucky. But now here for a second, I want to throw you a little bit of a curveball, Mandy. My okay. little buddy Joe's face is here, and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Mandy? <laughs> uh, what's your favorite horror movie of all time? What a question. That is the hardest question. <laughs> like when someone asks you, oh, what, what music do you like? I'm like, wait, I blink out. <laughs> Well, I love all all horror movies, man, from old, old, new, new. But I'm gonna this one always pops in my head when someone asks me this. It's the twenty thirteen remake of The Evil Dead. I really love that movie. <laughs> it is like I've so said numerous times it's the best remake of all time. It's so good. Um I I mean everything again, I'm kinda biased because one of my friends is in it. <laughs> you know, like really? Lou Taylor Putin, the cutest oh, guy in the world. <laughs> and I love Lou to death. And um, but even before that, like the idea of Evil Dead 2013, um, the fact that they're not going into the woods to party and get drunk, yeah. they're yeah. going to help their sister kick dope. And yeah. like, you know, like that to me is just like that's such a brilliant idea. Because why why aren't we leaving if we're just out here having a party and getting fucked up? You know, no, but <laughs> change it we up. <laughs> have now we have to stay. You know, yeah. she's already died once. Great if she, reason. yeah, if she falls off the wagon again, she's going to die again. So yes. no matter what she says, no matter what she does, we have to make a promise that we're not going to leave this place. And to me, absolute brilliance. And it's brutal. Uh, it's funny. Cool. It's gory. <laughs> it's just, there's, <laughs> yes. And everything about this movie. Have you seen the the deleted ending? Shoot, have I? What is that? I mean, you could spoil it if you want. <laughs> In the deleted ending, it shows a trucker driving a semi down the road, and he picks up uh, Jane Levy, and he puts her in a semi, and he starts driving, and then it cuts back to the cabin, and her brother's eyes open, and he's a deadite. No, I have not. What? It's, it's on YouTube. It, it's on the Blu-ray. That? Yeah, there's an alt... <laughs> Yep, there's an all it's an alternate ending on the Blu-ray and it is available on YouTube. So check either her okay, brother's I'm, eyes open or her eyes open. It's been a couple years since I watched it. So one of them is definitely a deadite. Wow. I'm gonna look it up after this. <laughs> yeah, please text me afterwards and let me know what you think because I think it's brilliant. I love it. For sure. I didn't know that. So yeah, we've <laughs> talked about your first horror movie. We've talked about your favorite horror movie, which is a damn good choice, by Thank the way. <laughs> Um, but before I let you go, we always bounce back to the same question, Mandy. We're going to go back to your first horror movie, which was Child's Play. And what we're going to do is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, okay. we're not ranking Child's Play on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that. We're not being critics. What we're doing here is ranking this movie on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, Mandy, what would your ranking of Child's Play be? Okay. I'm honestly, like, it's going to be pretty high. I'm going to go with a good four and a half for that one. I I love it. And it just, it, it, it felt like it's a whole part of my childhood. It opened me up to who I am now. Like, it opened the door. And like I said, I got called Chucky. I was a redheaded little, like, <laughs> face. <laughs> freckle face you know and there, it's just so many things about it it reminds me of my family of my childhood of myself and then just i kept it going i'm still into horror i still love chucky <laughs> so it's gonna be high for now <laughs> it has to be like i said with something like that that's really shaped and molded your life this long it has to be up there so i know i said it at the beginning guys but we are at the end of the third act the credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop but before that happens Make sure you're checking out her store. I have all the links down in the description. Make sure you're following her on social media. Get some of your own custom apparel. Because like I said, no one makes it like her and no one will wear it like you. So make sure that you are getting some of that custom apparel. Uh, Mandy, please don't go anywhere. I have a couple more questions for you. Um, everybody else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. All our links are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.